Hey guys, Arush here, and today we're talking about cells and the rest of the organelles found inside. And if you remember what organelle translates to, that word literally means tiny organs. <clears throat> and just to clarify, the type of cell that we've been talking about so far, yes, it is a eukaryotic cell, but specifically it's also an animal cell. Next week we're going to talk about plant cells and how they're a little bit different. But these cells that we're talking about, they're animal cells, and um, they make up you, me, and all the other animals that exist. So first let's do a quick recap. Uh, the first thing that we talked about was the plasma membrane and that's this outer layer of the cell that regulates uh, some molecules to enter and leave and uh, keeps others out. Okay so it's sometimes I kind of think of the plasma membrane as like a bouncer of the cell. It's regulating what gets to come and go. Next we talked about the cytoplasm and it's this jelly-like substance that's mixed with water and proteins and it's uh, a little bit thicker. Um, and that's where a lot of chemical reactions occur. That's where most metabolism occurs. Next, we have this uh, giant dark structure. That's the nucleus. And in eukaryotic cells, that's where all of our DNA is stored. If we look inside, we find the nucleolus. And that's a smaller, very, very darker structure. And that's where ribosomes are made. Uh, that's in the center of the nucleus. Next, we talked about this continuation of the nucleus, these folds um, that are studded with ribosomes. And that's the rough ER. What does the rough ER do? it makes proteins. Uh, followed by the rough ER, we have the smooth ER, which does not have ribosomes. What does the smooth ER do? The smooth ER has two main jobs. Number one, it creates lipids. Number two, it helps to remove toxins. And the last thing that we talked about were ribosomes. There are these tiny little structures that help to make proteins. The ribosomes are found in two locations. They're found in the cytoplasm, and they're also found studded on the rough ER. So today what we're going to go over, we're going to cover the Golgi apparatus, the mitochondria, lysosomes, vacuoles, vesicles, and centrioles. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, so the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is this, uh, it looks like flat stacks, okay? And what the Golgi apparatus does, <clears throat> the Golgi apparatus receives proteins and lipids from the ER, okay? So... Let's say there's a protein that's made. That's my protein. <clears throat> and what's going to happen is this protein that's made from the rough ER is going to go to the Golgi apparatus. <clears throat> what the Golgi apparatus is going to do, it's going to modify the protein, it's going to add the final touches to it, and it's going to put a tag on there. And what that tag does is it <clears throat> is basically saying this protein needs to go to this location. Okay, so it puts a tag on there, kind of like a mailing address, uh, for where that protein needs to go. And then the protein will come out on the other side. And then it could go, uh, that protein could be embedded in the membrane, it could stay inside of the cell, or it could go to a different cell. But what I want you guys to know is the Golgi apparatus modifies the proteins and lipids, gives them a tag, and then finally sends them to their destination, okay? An easy way to remember what the Golgi apparatus is, is think of the Golgi apparatus as the post office. And go ahead and add that into your notes and highlight that. The Golgi apparatus is the post office. It's like it sorts the different packages, puts a tag on them, and sends them out. <clears throat> Next we have the mitochondria. And what the mitochondria does is, well, first let's think about this. There's a lot of stuff going on in the cell. There's a lot of chemical reactions, a lot of things being made, a lot of things being moved around. And that all requires energy. Where's all that energy going to come from? That's going to come from the mitochondria. And I, li I like to think of it as the mitochondria, because the mitochondria is literally taking the molecules of food that we eat, and it's transferring that energy into a source that we could use. The source of energy that our cells use is called ATP. And we're going to talk a lot about ATP later. But the big idea is all of the energy for our cells coming from these structures here. What are they doing for our cells? They're making this energy molecule called ATP. And that's coming from the food that we eat. Okay, So think of this as the powerhouse of the cell. This is the power plant. This is where the energy is coming from. Okay. Next we have lysosomes. And we've seen this prefix before, lice or lysis. What does that root mean, lysis? 
That means to split or break apart. So inside of our cells, we have these packages. We have these packages right here. It's a lysosome. And it has a membrane, just like our cells do. But inside of the lysosome, we have these digestive enzymes. Okay? And what's going to happen is any time that a bacteria or a virus enters our cell, this lysosome is going to go to that bacteria or virus, ingest it, and it's going to use those enzymes to break it down. And remember, lyse or lysis means to split or break apart. So this lysosome is going to split or break apart that bacteria. So here's what this looks like. There's my bacteria. The lysosome is going to go there. It's going to ingest it, and it's going to mix that bacteria up with all of those digestive enzymes, and that bacteria is going to split or break apart. An easy way to remember this is I think of Lysol. Um, what does Lysol do? It's a disinfectant, and it kills bacteria and viruses. Now, the lysosome um, not only could break down bacteria and viruses, but if there's something in the cell that isn't working properly, the lysosome could find whatever organelle isn't working properly and ingest it. What it's going to do, it's going to break it down and recycle those molecules that make up the organelle, such as the amino acids. So, for example, if there is a mitochondria that isn't working properly, it's not making energy like it should be, that lysosome could ingest that mitochondria and break it down to recycle those parts. Next, we have a vacuole. What a vacuole is, is essentially just a storage compartment. Vacuoles could store water, waste, food, or minerals for later use at a cell. One thing to keep in mind is animal cells have very small vacuoles. When we talk about plant cells later, plant cells have a, a vacuole that's very, very large to store lots and lots of water. But what a vacuole is, I want you just to think a storage package. Okay. Next we have a vesicle. And a vesicle is very similar to a vacuole, but it's much smaller, and it's used to transport materials. Okay, so if the cell wants to take something in, it's going to put it in a transport package called a vesicle. Okay, very similar to a vacuole, but a vacuole is for storage, a vesicle is for transport. And the last one that we have for today are centrioles. Um, it's pretty easy to identify the centriole. Because, number one, they always come in pairs. They're always together. And they kind of look like little churros. Okay, um, What the centrioles do is they help the cell in division. They're found only in animal cells. Now, what's going to happen? When the cell is growing and it's getting ready to split, the DNA is going to consolidate. It's going to condense into these X-like structures called chromosomes. Okay? And we're going to go over, uh, go over this more later. But the DNA is going to consolidate into these X-like structures called chromosomes. And what the centrioles do is first they're going to replicate. We're going to get another centriole. And they're going to move to opposite ends. So this centriole might move here. This one might move all the way over here. And then what the centrioles do is they send out these protein fibers and these protein fibers connect to the chromosomes and they split them apart okay they're splitting everything apart um, specifically the the chromosomes which is consolidated dna and we'll talk more about that in a, at a later time but right now all i want you to know is what centrioles do is they assist in cell division they help the cell divide Okay, so let's do a full recap. We have the cell membrane, also called the plasma membrane. What that does is it's selectively permeable. It allows some molecules to pass through, okay, some molecules to pass through freely, such as water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, because those are very, very small molecules. Larger molecules like proteins that are too large just to move through they get in a different way. We'll talk about that later. Next, we have the cytoplasm, which is that jelly-like substance made up of water and proteins. Next, we have the nucleus, which is where the DNA is stored, okay, in eukaryotic cells. Inside of the nucleus, we have the nucleolus, which is this darker structure, 
and that's where ribosomes are made. This continuation of the nucleus is the rough ER. The rough ER is studded with ribosomes, and it makes proteins for the cell. Connected to the rough ER is the smooth ER. The smooth ER does not have ribosomes. It makes lipids. It makes lipids and helps to remove toxins. Next, we have ribosomes, which are the little machines that make the proteins. They're found in two locations, in the cytoplasm and on the rough ER. And now the new information that we started with today, we have the Golgi apparatus. And if I ask you, what is the Golgi apparatus similar to? The answer is, it's similar to a post office. Because that Golgi apparatus is going to receive proteins and lipids. It's going to modify them, put a special tag on them, and then send that protein or lipid to its destination. Okay? So the Golgi apparatus, think of it as the post office. Next, we have the mitochondria. It's also called the powerhouse of the cell, or you can think of it as the mitochondria. Why is that? The mitochondria is what makes energy for the cell. All the energy that our cells have come from the mitochondria because they're taking the food that we eat and transferring that into a molecule called ATP. And later on, we'll, get, we'll go in more depth of what ATP actually is. But where is all this energy coming from? It's coming from the mitochondria. Next, we have lysosomes. And that prefix, lys, means to split or break apart. So a lysosome is going to break down it's going to split or break apart either bacteria or viruses, or it could split or break apart cell organelles that aren't working uh, properly. So it could uh, consume those organelles, break them down, and then recycle their parts. Next, we have a vesicle. And a vesicle is similar to a vacuole, but it's much smaller, and it's used for transport. So a vesicle is used for transport. A vacuole is used for storage, okay? Very similar. Vesicles for transport, can move things around, and a vacuole is for storage, to store things for a later time. And the last thing that we talked about was the centrioles. The centrioles, they always come in pairs, and there are these little churro-looking structures, um, but what are they used for? They're used for cell division. They're used to uh, split apart our DNA when it's consolidated as chromosomes. They shoot out these spindle fibers. And these spindle fibers pull, pull the chromosomes apart to opposite ends before it splits. So centrioles are used in cell division. Please go ahead. Um, you don't need to make a mess like on this paper, like on this page. You don't need to draw the centrioles. Um, 